Hi everyone, thanks for watching this video. So what we're going to be talking about is um, the mechanical fuel injection in some of these older classic Mercedes. So what we're looking at here is a 220 SE. Now just before we go any further, one thing that can be quite confusing is that the car has two pumps. So at the back of the car, there is an electric fuel pump and its purpose is to transmit fuel or deliver it up to the second pump, which is this guy here. And this is the fuel injection pump. So let's not confuse the two. Now, um, if you look at these lines here, one is the fuel supply and one is the fuel return. So fuel is being delivered by the electric pump to the fuel injection pump at one of those lines and then it returns back to the fuel tank so it is a recirculating fuel delivery system now this pump here represents uh, mercedes's second attempt at fuel injection so the first attempt most of you would know it was first attempted on actually achieved on the 300 sl gullwing so that was Mercedes's first generation pump. Now, this pump that you see here is conceptually quite a different pump. It's different in two ways. One is that this is an indirect injection pump. The 300 SL Gullwing had a direct injection pump. So that's one major difference. The second major difference is how it works out how much fuel to deliver to the engine so in the case of this pump here there are two major inputs that it receives to work out how much fuel to deliver to the engine so <clears throat> if i just move out a bit you'd see this linkage here so this represents one very important input that is the throttle position so as you step on the accelerator pedal more and more this guy is going to come down and this is one of the inputs that works out that helps the pump work out how much fuel is delivered to the engine the other input is the rotational speed of the pump so as the pump turns faster it will deliver more fuel as you step on this more it will deliver more fuel. Now, just for sake of completeness, this linkage that we were looking at just now, so on that side, it is adding more fuel, and on this side, it would be adding more air. So the two are connected. The throttle uh, body here has a butterfly valve that regulates how much air goes through, and that linkage there when it moves commands the pump to issue more fuel so this linkage here is actually quite important it actually helps set a relationship between how much air goes in the engine and how much fuel goes in the engine so because it is a pump it pumps fuel so those inputs that we spoke about just now command it to deliver the fuel now I mentioned earlier that this pump is different from the Gullwing's pump in that this is indirect injection. So what we mean by indirect is, um, well I'll show you what the indirect is, but let me explain what the direct was. So in the case of the Gullwing, if you look at these, these lines here, these, these two lines here deliver fuel to the engine. Now in the case of the Gullwing, these lines actually went, if you can follow my finger, to about here on the cylinder head so basically on the engine block sorry so in the case of the gullwing it actually sprayed fuel directly into the combustion chambers where the pistons are that is what we mean by direct injection but when i say indirect what's happening here is that fuel comes along these lines and what happens is the fuel goes into these distribution blocks, one here and one here. So basically, this line that you see here has come from the injection pump, one of the plungers on the pump just now. There are two, the 
pump here that you see here it's a two plunger pump so one plunger or piston pumps fuel here and then it goes into these three lines here now at the end of this line inside the intake manifold there's a fuel injector sort of shaped like a J and it sprays into the inlet manifold track so because it is spraying into the intake manifold and not directly into the combustion chamber that is why we say it is indirect injection so having a look here this pump here represents quite a few refinements over the um, the Gowling's pump so as I mentioned earlier, the, one of the major advances was in how it works out how to deliver the fuel. So, this is one input, if you like. Now, inside the pump, you have these two weights. And as the engine rotates the pump, and the pump rotates, and it goes faster and faster, these two weights start moving apart. So, as they start moving apart, what happens is it's this motion is translated into a linkage that moves something called the rack this way. So as this rack device internally in the pump moves this way, it lets more fuel through these lines. And as it goes backwards, it would let less fuel. So basically, Pushing this is one of the signals, if you like, that makes the rack move that way and hence more fuel. Now, the, that rack has some, um, if you like, the major positioning of it is determined by this linkage and the two counterweights which I mentioned just now. But it's also fine-tuned by this guy here and this guy here. So what this one does is that when the engine's cold, um, what happens is um, this uh, thermostat, there's a, like a slide inside. And what this slide does is it lets in more air. So when the engine is cold, it lets in a lot more air into the intake manifold so that it can idle higher. And as the engine warms up, this thermostat reacts and it starts pushing down and it starts closing the slide and, and the air and fuel mixture is adjusted accordingly. So basically, what's happened in this particular pump is that the fuel mixture is uh, regulated via this thermostat. Now with this guy here, this is for the altitude of the car. So as you take the car into higher altitudes, it helps reposition the rack, which again fine tunes the mixture. Now when you want to start this car, it needs quite a rich mixture. So what this solenoid does, it moves the rack in a, in a large uh, motion that gives it the extra fuel required. So basically this is connected sort of in line with the starter motor. So when you're cranking, it moves the rack quite a lot. So that sort of represents uh, the major functionality of this pump. Now. Just a couple of things. Um, one thing you can do with it is you can adjust the idle mixture. So to adjust the idle mixture, when the engine is stopped, there is actually, you can just see it um, right, let me see if I can get it, uh, over there, that screw there. Now with the engine stopped, if you push it in and you rotate it uh, one or two clicks clockwise or anti-clockwise, that would make it um, richer or leaner. I'm not too sure which way it goes which, I'd have to look that up. Now, this red cap here is for you to top up the lubrication oil in it. And at the back, at the bottom here, there's actually a dipstick that tells you how much oil is in the pump. This is uh, engine oil. Now, one thing that can happen is that the seals in this pump might fail. And this pump is actually lubricated by a line there which you can sort of see there by engine oil pressure so what can happen is the internal seals can fail and this pump can start dripping engine oil onto the road now if that happens it's time to take the pump out and give it a proper service so just a couple of other things um, on the intake manifold here this is the cold start injector 
so it gets a fuel supply from the uh, pump side and uh, what it does is um, it sprays extra fuel if the engine's cold and this guy here is the idle speed screw so if the engine's idling too high or too low you'd sort of attack it here and on a side note um, there is this switch here on the throttle body so this car happens to be an automatic and so what that switch for is for is um, it is for the gearbox there's actually a solenoid there part of the down solenoid so if you have a sort of a very rough gear change you might want to start looking at uh, whether that switch is adjusted and functioning properly lastly we have this device here which because this car has an air conditioner what it does is it just uh, moves the, the linkage a bit to give it a faster idle when the compressor engages so that's um, about all for now in this video um, I do apologize if there are any errors, um, it's a bit rough I know, but um, it's unscripted and um, I'm not going to have the ability to film this car uh, shortly after this, so just making the best of the time we have. If you have any corrections that you think should be made or any tips or suggestions or questions, I'll help you where I can. I look forward to you leaving your comments on the website. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers.